Coach, uh, Minnesota Duluth, uh, Friday night game, one thing, had another player go down, injury, so you're even – you were shorthanded going into the games Friday. Saturday, even a little bit more shorthanded. Your team deserved a better fate, I, I, yeah. in, in my estimation. Tell me about the effort that they put in there and, and kind of what you saw. From yeah, that. well, the way the weekend went, Wads, is we were, we were fine, totally fine with the first period on Friday, down one nothing. Uh, shots were in our favor. We thought it was a you know a pretty even even game. Give up a goal in the first shift of the second period. That 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 hurt. Um, I, we we then kind of battle through our way, get to two to one. Then we go. I think it was like bang bang, and it's four to one, yeah. and they score in the first shift of the third. Those first two minutes of the second and third were there were huge momentum things hurting us. Um, and I, we, we typically use those as objectives and they do, they do matter. I'm not sure they ever mattered more than those two in, in this season. Anyway, um, where I was disappointed on Friday was from the 16 minute mark to the six minute mark of the third period, we stopped playing and that is completely unacceptable. Um, however, uh, we we regrouped Saturday. They had a they had a uh, players only kind of sit down chat, and uh, we did what we typically do. And I, I um, Saturday night at Duluth, Friday night at CC, which is two of our last four games. It was difficult to look them in the face and ask them to do things a certain way uh, when they did and not get the results. And and I understand CC and Duluth deserved to win those games. I, that's not what I'm saying, but. I really felt our boys deserved a better fate, and uh, it was difficult uh, because we we kept fighting. And Saturday, as you mentioned, we had six. I'm going to say regulars, wads, uh, quote unquote. Okay, guys that we penciled into the lineup as we started this season. We had six guys in the stands, and the the effort. Tanyan Baser was his first college game. Um, uh, as one of our 11 forwards. Uh, now, now Duluth had, had, was dealing with other, you know, lineups, uh, roster shakeups and so on and so forth. But uh, it was tough. It was tough to look at our kids and, and not see smiles because I think they deserve smiles. I really do. Uh, to score late in the third and, um, and, and, and give ourselves a, a chance, you know. And, you know, some of the efforts, Hampus's effort comes to mind on empty net. He skates back and, and, and wax it, uh, you know, to keep the puck out of the empty net. It, we're asking them to play as hard as they can. We're asking them to engage in a, in a battle mentally and physically. Uh, we're asking them to execute at the highest level possible, and, and they're doing that um, and just not getting rewarded for it. And I've stood up here for four years and not talked like that. I, I, I you know, I, I know the results aren't even close to good enough, and, and that falls on me, but those boys uh, ha have deserved better. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we got home, we, we were resting. Uh, it doesn't look like um, any of those six are going to be available. Uh, so we really have to be, you know, we, we've got to be conscious of practice. You know, we don't, we don't even have four full lines of, of, of forwards, for example. Um, and then you've only got two goaltenders, so you don't want to, you know, you don't want to overwork anybody, but you got to get your work in. It's, so that's where we are right now. Um, and I, I, there's there's one group of people that I know won't feel sorry for us, and that's North Dakota. <laughs> uh, they're fighting for a league championship, and they're obviously really good. But that's the way that's the way we looked uh, at this past weekend, and uh, proud of our guys for for those two road trips for us in Colorado, and then at Duluth uh, are are two two long trips, and I thought our guys played better than zero and four. You mentioned. Sort of the adversity, um, the having to go through a rash of injuries, and um, and you've got guys in that you didn't expect to maybe be playing the, this past weekend, but to go out on Saturday, you alluded to it. But to, what does it say about the the execution and effort and and resiliency to yeah. come back from that adversity to, to battle as hard as they did? Well, it, what it does is it talks about the humans, right? It talks about the boys as people, which. We don't talk about them enough because everybody in in my business talks about results, and you forget about these 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 boys and and who they are as people. That's what it talks about to me. Um, great kids, man. You know um, what we try to talk about standing in front of the room was let's not talk about or think about who we don't have here. This is who we do have here. Yes, we miss those people. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm not. It can't get in the way of us performing and competing. Um, one of the things that I've 
try to take pride in in my in my time as a coach um whether it be this role or the you know the role i had at miami before um was was having teams that played hard and it it, it it's gut-wrenching when you don't play hard uh to me um but when you play hard and get and don't get the results that's also gut wrenching. that makes it difficult um and those kids played hard man we we, we played hard and that's all I can really ask. Then you want them to execute, but we all know college athletics is, is, is games of mistakes and mistakes happen. And I thought we handled the mistakes fine. I thought we dealt with them much better than we have in the past. It wasn't too high. It wasn't too low. Um, but it says a lot about who those kids are as people that maybe they haven't played as much as they wanted or, and, you know, in Tanyan's case, hasn't dressed. And, 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 you know, they all stuck together and they were happy for guys getting more ice time, guys being in the lineup, um, you know, and, and we'll continue to squeeze for guys to take advantage of that opportunity. Because I think at the end of the day, what we do with our opportunity, that's, up, that's on us, man. W whether that's me in my role, you guys in your role, the players in their role. They have to take advantage of their opportunity, and, and we're squeezing people to, to make sure they do that. Another guy that got that opportunity, Friday night's game was Carter McPhail. You had, you had to make that tough decision to, to take Bruno out, but Carter got a chance to go in there, and you, you could see how the guys were kind of happy for him, yeah. what he means to them in the locker room. Yeah, um, very similar to, to, to Tanyan's case, except Carter's been around here for a couple of years, and... Um, you know, I think you know this, Wads, by no means was I saying it was Bruno's fault. It wasn't. Um, the team had stopped playing in front of Bruno, uh, not because of Bruno, just for whatever reason. It put Carter in. Not only did he go in, but his first experience is, is a penalty shot or something crazy in a in a 6-1 to one or 6-2 to two game. Uh, and he stopped it, you know. So he, he, he's, he deserves it. You know, we always stand by the decisions we make as far as who's in the lineup, who starts, whatever. Um, but he's, he's deserved it. He comes every day and tries as hard as he can, whether it be goalie session, practice, he's watching video, he's doing everything to hone his craft, and he deserves to play. Does he deserve to play over Neaton or over Bruno? Well, we've made those decisions, and we don't, uh, you know, when we stand by the decisions. But to see him in there and see the smile on his face and then to, to, to make a few saves, uh, really, really happy for Carter, and it was good to... Good to, good to see him go in there and do well. Jumping back to Saturday night's game, you mentioned Hampus and the effort that he put on. The, the one specific, not only the play, but the shift that he was on. And he was at one end of the ice diving to block a shot away. Yeah. Uh, Louis Belpedio, a famous yeah, yeah, Miami yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. Very similar to that. Yeah. And then turns around, and he was right on the doorstep trying to bang in that what ended up being yeah. the game-tying goal that Sullivan got. Which is, which is Hampus to a T because he's a defenseman. He's supposed to be at the blue line, but instead he's in front of the other team's net. <laughs> no, no that, that's, that's who Hampus is. That's what makes Hampus Hampus. He's a winner. Unfortunately, he hasn't won as much as he would have liked over the course of his time to this point at Miami, but that kid is a winner, and he doesn't stop playing, and you hit it on the head. I mean, it's a diving whack at a puck, and then he's in the other, he's in the other end in front of the other team's net because we were down a goal, and I'm not going anywhere until we score, and that's just the way he's wired, man, and, and we're hoping that that type of mentality is... is you know, kind of bleeding over is the wrong way to put it, but but you know, no. coming to other players too. And I'm not I'm not saying that the other players aren't wired right. I'm just saying he has such a uh, an attitude that no matter who, when, where, we're going to win, and I'm going to do everything I need to do as an individual to make that happen, whether it does or doesn't. Um, but it was a it was a it was a pretty cool uh, stretch there for Hampus and for our guys in general, the guys that were on the ice. Probably had a smile on his face the whole time. Too. Oh, no, no <laughs> doubt. Nobody smiles more than that kid. Nobody smiles more than Hampus, for sure. Looking ahead to this weekend, um, you know, you've seen them once. Uh, they're coming in off of a, a sweep of, of Denver. Uh, you know how good they are. But uh, what did you learn from the, the, the last series against them? And, and what do you take from, from last weekend series into this weekend? Well, I, I, I don't want to speak, and, 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 you know, I'll say Brad and Dane for sure. I don't want to speak for them, but they're, they're probably playing better now, Drew, than they were then. Um, I think then they were still trying to figure out a little bit who they were. It was still early in the year. They've got seven or eight new defensemen. Um, they've got some of the usual suspects up front, guys that we've come to know um, and know how good they are. Um, 
but watching them now, they've got some young D that are really, really playing well. Um, they're just, and, and, and they're hungry. And what I, what I like, really like about the way North Dakota plays is they may have some of the top skill in the country, but they are going to fight you for every inch. They don't play the soft skill game. They play the hard nose North game and they've got guys that have some of the best skill in the country. Um, and, and we, we learned that and saw that. And they're, what we saw in the first series is what we've seen enough of is they're really good at home. But, you know, so they'll come here this weekend. Um, you know, they, they've played well in this rink, at least in my time here. Uh, so I don't think coming, coming on the road is something they're concerned about. Um, we just, we, we were going to have to play the game a certain way. We're going to have to possess the puck, try to make their top people defend in terms of five on five. We have to stay on the penalty box. I'm not sure they have a, anybody's got a hotter power play. I think they're like 45% since January 1st. Uh, the second game against Denver, I, I think, was a five-minute major in a 2-2 game that turned into a 5-2 game or a 4-2 game. Um, they're, just, they're just really good, man. And, and I've said this before, and you've heard me say it before, is I think one of their biggest strengths is their belief and confidence. And that is something that you can't teach. It's something you have to earn, and they have 100% earned it, at least in my, in my time to this point. So you mentioned staying out of the penalty box and, and their power play. You touched on a little more about how good that power play has been and what you have to do to go up to that line and, and not, not go over Yeah, it. I, I think that's what I always say is we have to, we have to be able to be disciplined enough to, to, to push yourself to the line to compete, but don't go over the edge because then you're out of control and then you're taking, you know, you're, you're taking a chance that you are going to take penalties. Um, and you have to be on your toes because if, you, if you're on your heels and you're hooking and holding and grabbing, we're going to be in the penalty box the whole time because this team is going to be on their toes, ready to go. They're, you know, I, I don't want to say where it starts and stops. They can do that. But, you know, Jackson, and Blake, and, and Reese Gaber. Now, never, you cannot underestimate Owen McLaughlin. That, that kid is, is ex really, really good. A lot of the talk goes to, to 9 and 17 because of how slick they are and how good they are in the power play coming downhill and shooting pucks and so on. But number 22 is a really, really, really good player. They've got this young defenseman, number four, who's playing. That's one of those guys, I think, when we saw them earlier in the year, he was, he was um, just trying to figure out college hockey and so on. Now he looks like a, a wily veteran out there running the power play and, and just his play overall. So it's, it's just a group. And that's, that's just the... That's just the one of their units they've got they've got draft picks and and so on and so forth everywhere so we're going to have a game plan we need to trust in and execute that game plan part of that game plan will be stay on the penalty box and in the situations that we do have to kill penalties which there will be some we have to we have to stick to a game plan to hopefully give ourselves an opportunity to kill those off Sully, uh, a gritty performance in Saturday night's game, a depleted roster. Let's first off talk about the comeback effort. You were right there in the middle of the scrum, got the game-winning goal. We can talk about how the goal finally got awarded eventually, but tell us about that whole play and how it's set up and, and what you guys go through to try and get an extra attacker goal like that. Yeah, we had a lot of guys step up in that Saturday game and testament to the character of the team. And all six guys on the ice just made that goal happen. I was just happened to be in the right spot, and Hampus diving for that breakaway on the empty net to save it and give us a chance was huge. So just a lot of good hard work on Saturday and proud of the effort we had. So you got to put yourself in the right place at the right time for that. And, and Hampus was actually right there next to you, too. You guys were both banging hard trying to, to knock that loose puck in. How do you find that spot? I mean, it, it, does the puck just come to you? I mean, your mind's got to be racing a, a mile a minute. Yeah, I mean, heading into a six-on-five, you have an extra guy, so you want to just get around the crease. And we were always stressing all weekend to get to that dirty area. So just happened to bounce towards me at the right time, and I just made sure I was around the net at the time. And let's talk about the whole kind of weekend as a whole. The, the roster a little bit depleted right now with some of the guys that have been there for a good chunk of the season. What's the mindset for you guys going in there? You're kind of now a, a crafty veteran. You, you won a national championship and all. So how do you kind of get the, the mindset to, to go in there when you know that maybe some of the, the horses you came with weren't there? Yeah, it's just doing what – having your why and playing the, your strengths is kind of the message with anyone stepping in in bigger roles just – Keeping it simple and pulling the team together. You don't need to try and go out of your way to do anything special. Just pull your weight and we'll find a way to keep pulling weights and wins. 
Looking ahead to uh, this weekend's matchup as uh, as we look ahead to North Dakota, uh, you've seen them once. You went up there to, to play them. Um, what uh, you held tight with them in in one game. I think the other game score probably not indicative of, of the game was a little closer than that. But uh, what'd you learn in that series, and and how do you move forward uh, with them this weekend? Taking what you learned from that last time. Yeah, unfortunately, I was hurt at the time. But from what I've known and from the guys, like. We hung in there good, and they're a good team, but so are we. So we'll take what we learned from that game and hone in defensively and create more offense and uh, just believe in ourselves to get the job done this weekend. As a leader in the locker room, Greg mentioned the sort of being shorthanded. And um, you know, everybody kind of goes through it. It seems like it's, it's hit you guys pretty hard as far as injuries are concerned. But um, next man up mentality. But how do you, as as leaders in the locker room, um, sort of push forward and, and – you utilize like the, the close games as as the, we're right there. We're we're going toe to toe with everybody. Yeah, I mean it's definitely a confidence boost for guys coming in. We're playing just as good of hockey. Like we're a deep team, and just emphasizing what everyone can do effort wise is huge. And pulling the rope to have those good games like we are, and I think it'll continue. All right, let's talk about you uh, as a transfer coming in here. So what what's it been like? What was the the reasoning? How how did you end up at Miami? I guess that that's the good question. Yeah, I enjoyed my time out east at UMass, but uh, just wanted a new opportunity near home. And Miami's been a dream school of mine, being from Michigan and always somewhere I wanted to be. And have had good relationships here and history and friends like Jack Clement. And um, I wanted to be a part of helping Miami win and just pulling them up any way I can and being around family and having a good time at a, a good hockey environment. Wanting to win, you've been a part of the ultimate win. You won a national championship with UMass back. And in fact, you scored the primary, you had the primary assist on the game winning goal in that game. Kind of walk us through what, what your memories were then and, and what it means to you now to have won a national championship. Yeah, I mean, looking back on it, it's definitely one of my, the best comp accomplishments I've been a part of. And I learned a lot from that journey. And that's definitely something along with the winning and discipline and whatever life for hockey I'm trying to instill every day and try and help with this team. and. It was an amazing experience, and I'll always be grateful for it. Where's the ring at? <laughs> it's home in my nightstand here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. One final question. So you played in Hockey East, an, an amazingly historically great conference over the years with, with amazing schools, BC, BU, near the top all the time. And now you've had a chance to kind of run through a little bit through the NCAC, although you missed the trip to North Dakota and the Ralph. So how do you kind of compare Hockey East, NCAC? In fact, UMass ended a run of, what, four straight national championships for the NCAC. Yeah, the NCAC is an incredible league. Hockey East was great and a testament to them, but I, I think every team in the NCAC is just bar none amazing. Like, there's no weaklings. Like, it's a great league, and it's competitive, and – I mean, that's why you play, right? You want to play the best teams, so it's fun.